Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Galileo K-12 online webinar, the new Galileo menu bar and teaching dashboard. These latest enhancements were designed specifically with teacher use in mind. We've made it even easier than ever to build and administer curriculum materials and assessments, as well as to assess data to inform instruction. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule today. We will be answering questions today at the end of the presentation. The webinar today is hosted by Assessment Technology Incorporated and presented by Dr. Jason Feld, Vice President of Corporate Projects and facilitated by myself, Jody Jepson. It looks like a lot of people have signed on and now let's go ahead and start the presentation. Jason, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Thanks, Jody, and uh, good morning and good afternoon to everybody participating in the webinar. Um, we're, we're glad you were able to join us. Uh, we're going to go ahead uh, today and take you on a uh, kind of a short tour uh, through the new interface in Galileo K-12 Online. There are, are two um, integrated components to this new interface. Uh, the first is the teaching dashboard that we've been working on the past several months, um, along with districts and charters and getting input, um, as well as the overall menu bar that is threaded throughout Galileo. Um, I'm going to focus on both of them this morning and, and give you a quick walk through, uh, through them so you can get a, a view of those. A couple of things I want to note up front in terms of uh, the approach we took in uh, building out these new enhancements to the system. Um, you can see the list of goals in front of you um, on your screen uh, to the extent where we could, and this is in most cases, uh, we're now providing one-click access to um, all your assessment, your curriculum, and your reporting uh, tools. We've added a series of graphical icons uh, to the system, um, similar to the icons that you see on, on current technology so that there's quick recognition and even navigation. Uh, we've added some uh, personalized interface components for the teacher, uh, including the ability to put uh, photos in and a school district logo. Uh, the reports have changed somewhat in terms of uh, their color and their interactivity. Um, we have now put in a fully integrated uh, calendar right into the dashboard. It, it's kind of a one-stop shopping place for uh, the teacher to do all his or her uh, planning uh, for assessment, for lesson planning, uh, for events and so forth. Uh, one of the really cool things we've done here is to add a feature called a SMART. Basically what SMART does is once a teacher logs in, the teacher's dashboard will automatically populate with the most recent uh, assessment data that's available for the student so that the teacher does not have to um, select um, different tests and different time periods to get that information. Uh, the dashboard will always know what the most current data is and will immediately populate uh, the reports. Uh, the last major piece in terms of this um, enhancement is to ensure that it is a responsive design uh, dashboard so it can be used um, on a number of different uh, devices, including tablets, Chromebooks, and um, laptops. And, and you'll see some of this as we kind of give you the um, 30,000 foot overview of the dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and uh, exit out of uh, the PowerPoint presentation for a minute and uh, jump into um, the internet. I'm actually going to be doing this on a, an internal server here at ATI, so uh, you will not be seeing this yet in terms of your application, but um, it will be available um, to you uh, very shortly, and we'll talk about that. Um, at the end of uh, uh, this presentation. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually just log in to my normal um, Galileo login as a teacher. And I'm going to be using uh, the login seven bars and my password. And I'm just going to go ahead and log in as I normally would as a teacher. And as you can see, um, as soon as I logged in, the new dashboard um, and its graphical interfaces uh, appears for me right on my screen with the most current data. I'm going to walk you through both um, the uh, front side of the dashboard and then the calendar side. You can see uh, just switching back and forth occurs right here, but we'll start with the menu. Uh, the first thing I would like you to notice is that the, the new menu um, bar in Galileo um, is much shorter uh, than it has been previously. 
So the major components for the teacher in terms of setup, assessment, curriculum, and reports are all there, and they're easily accessible through a one-click uh, interface. We've also made it possible for the teacher to uh, create his or her own settings on the dashboard. Uh, we have a place where the teacher can actually write from the menu item, get help, go into the Galileo forum, get tech support, and house any information about her or himself. Uh, this little widget here simply takes the teacher back to the dashboard if she or he goes away from it at any point in the application, and here is the logout. You'll notice um, on the dashboard, and we'll start here on the upper left-hand corner, um, um, as you wish, as a district or a charter, you can include your own logo now and any information that you think is relevant. In terms of switching from data on a class to data on an intervention group in a class, it's simply a matter of clicking on the intervention group and it will bring up data from that intervention group. Um, and all the intervention groups that you might have are listed right here um, in your settings page. I'm going right back to the uh, main dashboard. If we look down here a little bit, you'll notice that we have the roster. Uh, some of the major changes here, um, some are more aesthetic in that uh, if in fact you want to include um, pictures of students or any pictures associated with a student on your dashboard, you can. You'll note that this class currently has 14 students. We're showing all. We do know that uh, one of these students actually has a birthday today. And of course, we can see that there are two upcoming birthdays and those are noted here as well um, on the alerts or things that are letting the teacher know what's going on. You can print the roster right here from the roster interface, and you can add and drop students uh, using this con icon right here. Um, all the assessment history for the student is housed uh, right here on this icon, and all the basic information for any particular student is housed right here. So again, what we've done is made one click access to all the information you need for a student and included icons associated with that. You'll note here, as we move to the middle of the dashboard, that um, unlike the previous dashboard where you would actually have to choose um, the most recent assessments to get information related to student levels of risk and whether they're on course or um, at a low risk or a moderate risk or high risk, the dashboard automatically populates. It will give you immediately the information on the number of students at that risk level uh, for the subject area here in fourth grade uh, ELA. And it will also give you uh, color codes so that you know what each risk level group is. These are obviously drill downs, so if you want to get to actionable reports for instruction, uh, you simply click on that. You'll also notice down here at the bottom, you have direct access to the performance tracker as well as um, a more detailed look at benchmark results uh, for your students. Right below that, um, again, this is pre-populated, uh, the Student Growth and Achievement Report. It will automatically generate information for you from your two most recent assessments. I'll let you know if expected growth is being, being maintained. One of the new features we added in here, uh, and this will work uh, for teachers, for schools, and for a district, if you actually want to get a closer view at a cluster of students that are uh, in this particular area, you simply uh, highlight that area. It will pull it in, and then, of course, you can look at each individual student. I can go back out and look at all the students in my class, or again, I can hover in to look at these two students that are out here on the edges, um, high achievers, high performance, and see what's going on with them as well. We can also do that for individual students. And of course, as before, actually look at the list of students that are in each group. So again, a couple of new features that are added here. Um, the icons, um, the one-click access, the immediately drill downs, and in many cases, the necessity of getting information without having to drill down by simply hovering over the information uh, that you need. Uh, we'll move over here now to the right side of the dashboard. Um, the change here in terms of events, again, is everything will be pre-populated for you with the major reports and their date, and you'll see the detailed analysis, the intervention alert, the test monitoring. We put navigation tools in here so that as you gather more and more information, just like on the Internet, you'd simply go to the next page 
to see um, information that was further back in the past, or you can go back to the first page. So again, navigation back and forth between data uh, that occurs over time is as simple as uh, one click uh, to that. Next piece. Uh, we're going to jump now and have the teachers switch from looking at reports to go to the new calendar in the system. Uh, the new calendar will show up for the teacher, and the teacher can look at it by day, month, week, um, and even today's information. You'll notice that the calendar is color-coded uh, color because, as many of you know, we are now um, uh, building out and, and beta testing with a number of districts the digital curriculum platform and uh, lesson planning. I'll, I'll show you a little bit of that here on the calendar. But again, everything related to uh, lessons, uh, units, assessments, general events, and assignments appear right here for the teacher. The roster stays um, on that page as well. Um, right from the calendar, I can simply do one click to build, and I can build a formative assessment. I can build the dialogue. I can access or build the digital curriculum, as well as lesson plans. And similarly, I can schedule any of my events on the calendar. I've scheduled a few here just for us to take a look at, and then I'll show you how it's done. Uh, we'll take, for example, uh, we'll maybe we'll go to this particular uh, instructional uh, dialogue that's scheduled uh, for Tuesday. As the teacher, I've, I've scheduled this for my students, and I want to go ahead and initiate it, either in class or in the lab, on their mobile devices, um, or at home, and I simply click on that, and it will let me know my start time, my end time, the duration. I can certainly edit it if I want, or I can actually go ahead and start it. Once I start it from my calendar, uh, the dialogue will be activated for the student, and the nice thing about activating it in this way, if I care to actually type notes to the students and give them additional instructions online as in the dialogue, I can do that immediately through the right board and right from um, my calendar. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the calendar here. Um, as many of you uh, probably already know, we are building in and linking into uh, the system and, and therefore into the new dashboard external resources such as Khan Academy, such as Engage uh, New York, um, as those are in the system. At this point, that information is also pretty easily accessible on the calendar. Um, here's an example of the teacher putting in uh, one here, uh, simply scheduling in the calendar. And again, it can easily be previewed by the teacher directly in the calendar, um, and she can see what she or he has scheduled uh, for the student. I'll go ahead and close that up and go back uh, to the calendar again. Um, again, uh, the calendar is designed so that anything that is happening is in one place for the teacher. And of course, the teacher can navigate the calendar uh, back uh, a month or forward to other months. In terms of the ease of scheduling now on the new, dash new dashboard, let's say I built a lesson plan in Galileo, which uh, teachers are now starting to do with the new interface, and I want to schedule it. I simply click on the schedule lesson plan, and as you can see, while I am not in the dashboard per se, my new menu is still there. And of course, I can get right back to my dashboard by clicking here. But in this instance, I simply want to go ahead and choose my own library. Uh, and I am Boris for today. And I want to go ahead and choose my lesson plan uh, that I created. And as you can see, um, I can see on my lesson plan my instructional dialogue, my Khan Academy, my Engage New York material included in my lesson plan, as well as the quiz. If I want to take a look at what's in there, again, it's simply one click. And it will open up the materials that I've included um, in my lesson plan. Um, and again, within the lesson plan, I can schedule uh, things to happen in any day of the week, and then they will automatically appear on my calendar. Okay. Getting back to my dashboard, it's as simple as clicking again. Um, I'll be back to my main uh, calendar. It will repopulate with any updated information uh, I have in it. And of course, I can go back to my report settings, and it will repopulate automatically using the smart technology we've built in with the current information um, on the students uh, in my class. I, of course, since I have all my assessments in the system, can certainly switch and look at other uh, data that I have. But the design of the dashboard is to try to take as much work away from the teacher in getting to the data 
and presenting the data for her or him uh, right up front uh, in the system. So we'll jump back to the calendar one more time here uh, so you can get a, another look at it. Um, if I want to actually go in now and instead of scheduling um, an assessment or assignment or a lesson, I actually want to build one. And so now the new lesson plan builder uh, in Galileo is sitting there. Again, the new um, main menu stays up front, so I can always get right back to my teaching dashboard. But if I want to go into my own lesson plan library or a shared lesson plan library, I simply click on it. Uh, I click my um, edit view, and now you're seeing the brand new lesson plan interface uh, that's in the system as well, which is currently being used by a number of uh, beta districts that we've been working with. The nice thing about the lesson plan, as it's embedded in the new dashboard and the calendar, the teacher can immediately see all the standards uh, that are included in her or his lesson plan, all the materials. If you recall, we showed them to you earlier, but here they are now, and of course the teacher can view them and any assessments. Uh, the ability to add standards um, and materials um, and assessments to the lesson plan simply occurs on the right side. So for example, using my dashboard and going directly into lesson planning, if I simply wanted to uh, look at uh, standards for the fourth grade and include them in my lesson plan using the new interface, uh, instead of having to uh, search for anything, I simply hover over to see what it is. And if I want to actually include that standard, I simply click the plus sign. And if I go over to my standards, it now appears in my lesson plan. Um, I can, of course, remove it from my lesson plan as well. The system will always, in this new interface, ask me if I want to. I do here, and so I will. Same thing with materials. Uh, if, in fact, I actually want to search for materials using my new uh, dashboard um, and menu interface, if I have the standards that I uh, selected, um, I, all I simply need to do is click on my search uh, button, and there are a number of different types of searches that are currently in Galileo. Not only can you now search through this new interface, dialogues and uh, resources that are in Galileo, but you can also search for resources uh, throughout the internet. You can see it immediately pulled up resources related uh, to the standard, and if I want to include them, again, it's as simple as one click. I've included this one, it's shaded out, and of course if I look at my materials, there it is. Um, so I can not only directly from my calendar, my teacher's dashboard, build uh, lesson plans, I can uh, schedule that for implementation, it's on my calendar, and I can get back to that information um, anytime I want to, again by one click, and looking at my calendar. So again, just to review uh, the changes that are in the system at this point, the entire menu bar for Galileo has changed to be pretty much one click. We have added icons to the system and hover capabilities so that you can actually see what they are. Of course, here's your sign out login. Uh, the reporting uh, functionality has been streamlined, again, with one click um, access to each of the major uh, tools that teachers um, typically are going to be using in the system. Customization, um, the immediate ability to switch from a class to any one of a number of intervention groups that the teacher might have set up. A uh, new look at the roster with some kind of interesting uh, little add-ons, so to speak. Um, and again, icon-driven. Um, and then, of course, jumping back immediately to the reports again, uh, the smart reporting capability that allows the data to show up immediately for the teacher to see immediately informa information, drill down, and of course, uh, drill down as deep as they want in terms of looking at specific um, information for the students um, in their class. That, um, as you may or may not be surprised, is as detailed and as complicated as it gets when it comes to the new dashboard uh, interface for teachers and the new uh, menu. Uh, approach we have taken, uh, which will be threaded throughout the system. Um, the dashboard is um, and the menu are the, the next uh, two pieces we are rolling out. Uh, I think as many of you know, we have rolled out a, a beta version of the digital curriculum platform, which is now being implemented by a number of districts. If you want more information on that, please you know, don't hesitate to fire off an email to us or give us a call. I think everybody is already aware of the new K-12 Student Parent Center. 
that is now active for all our district clients um, and our charter clients. Um, if you've got questions on that, give us a call as well. And of course, um, this uh, new interface with the menu and uh, the new teaching uh, dashboard um, will be um, rolling out uh, very shortly. And in fact, I actually just received a question, which was, when will it come out? Um, uh, I can tell you that the plan for the rollout on the new dashboard is at the end of this month. Um, that is the goal, so we're hoping to uh, meet that goal. Um, and so that will be available for uh, everybody to use um, uh, prior to, uh, hopefully in most cases, at the start of the um, uh, new school year. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop at this point. I know there are a number of other questions that are coming in. Um, so um, I will go ahead and um, switch back. Uh, and I can always come back uh, to uh, this dashboard if there are more questions, but I will go ahead and switch back to um, the PowerPoint again and just uh, leave that open and I'll start to ask, answer some of the questions that are coming in. Um, okay, I've got one. Um, will ATI be offering any training? Um, there will be, um, of course, um, uh, materials associated with this new interface, um, quick reference guides from our professional development uh, team, and uh, of course, uh, we can do very uh, um, scheduled WebExes uh, with groups of, of individuals and districts. You know we offer that at, at no cost, so our field services staff are happy to do that. You just got to give them a holler, and uh, they'll set something up uh, for you. Uh, we are not anticipating, um, you know, a, a four or five, six hour training on this. This has been specifically designed uh, to be as intuitive as one can possibly make an interface. And um, we've been getting some initial feedback uh, uh, from some of the district and charter partners that, um, you know, it, it is in fact achieving that goal. So we, we do expect that it will be pretty uh, straightforward. Um, you know, with a quick learning curve, but we will support you as much um, as we can um, on this. Um, I think once you start using it, it'll, it'll be pretty straightforward. Um, I got another question that had to do with more of the digital curriculum, uh, but I'll answer it. It has to do with um, uh, data be uh, taken from Google Docs, um, and I guess um, I'm assuming that um, information um, from Google Docs, maybe it's related to lesson planning, being brought into um, a Galileo lesson plan, a Galileo digital curriculum. Um, yeah, we can actually uh, work with that. So, um, um, yeah, and it's not the first time we've had that question, but, but yes, we're actually bringing into the digital curriculum platform, depending on the district or uh, we're working with, um, information that they've already built down curriculum that it might have been Word files that might be in Google Docs, um, all kinds of different places. The nice thing about getting it all in one place on the dashboard with your own digital curriculum is that it gives you complete control over the content, um, pushing it out, modifying it, and as you saw um, with the new dashboard technology and the new digital curriculum and lesson planning, there is a seamless integration between standards, uh, instruction, resources, uh, and reporting. So everything is really very tightly tied together right now, and we think that's going to be a major major time saver for educators in terms of not simply looking at assessment results, but actually doing the things they love to do, which is to teach teach the students. So we wanted to, to tie that package together pretty tightly for you. Um, all right, I, I got another question. Well, there's no one about the online curriculum. I guess it follows them. How can we learn more about the online curriculum and lesson planning within the teaching dashboard? Uh, just give your field services person a call. Uh, we can get some materials to you and uh, kind of walk you uh, through that as well. But, but again, you know, to, to make the most important point, uh, the dashboard has been designed to be icon driven, uh, to be pretty much one click to get to where you want to go. Uh, in some cases, not having to click at all, just simply hover so you can get quick information. Uh, we've made it smart, so to speak. Um, if you can make technology smart by uh, generating immediately for the teacher the kinds of reports that provide the most recent uh, data. Um, I did get another question. Uh, will, the, oh, will the teaching dashboard still have all my data from previous years? Um, the answer to that is yes, it will. Uh, the data will just be accessed much more quickly um, uh, in this way, but all the data 
uh, from prior years that you've been implementing uh, Galileo in your classroom, uh, that data will be there for you. It will just be much easier uh, for you to access with uh, the new dashboard. I think, um, how are we doing on move quickly? Yeah, I know I moved through this uh, pretty quickly with you. I'm going to go ahead and jump back. I have a couple more minutes, one or two minutes, Jody. Uh, let me just jump back um, real quickly um, so that I can bring this up uh, for you uh, one more time so you can get a look at it. Um, and, and don't worry, you know, you won't lose the look. We are putting this into the system, so it's yours in a couple of weeks. Um, so just give us um, a call and stuff so we can uh, answer any additional questions. Um, again, to review, uh, we've modified the entire menu so that it is uh, less um, text uh, heady, more icon uh, driven, um, uh, much more visual for the reader with one click access. Uh, we've made it uh, pretty easy for the teacher to uh, set, uh, set things up in the system uh, for her and himself. And um, again, uh, information for the teacher and all the resources the teacher needs uh, sitting right here. Uh, we talked about the roster, uh, the icons, um, and the hovering, so you actually can see uh, what each icon uh, is. Um, the reports, which have both drill downs, and obviously if I clicked on this, which I, you know, I won't do today, but it'll take you to the more detailed report, but instant access to information uh, without even having to click in many cases and then access to the reports. Um, the most recent reports populated with uh, be able to, uh, the ability to actually um, look as closely as you like, um, as well as um, actually looking at uh, the students uh, in a particular group, and of course there's the drill down here. If I click on that, it will go to the drill down. Uh, and then of course the ability to uh, change your reports, uh, change your subject areas. Um, um, if you are, um, have multiple grade uh, levels that you might be dealing with, also uh, grab that as well. Um, the reports themselves um, and the quick access to each one. And of course finally, um, the place where everything comes together in terms of assessment, lesson planning, just general events, uh, like you're going to the zoo, um, and assignments all here on the teacher's calendar, all easily accessible, both in terms of building and scheduling, and of course, um, reviewing and actually implementing so that you can have um, personalized learning experiences for students, not only in the classroom, but also uh, outside the classroom as well with the ability to communicate with the students. Okay, I will stop here. I know I covered a lot, but hopefully this information uh, has been um, helpful as a, a starter uh, to you. There are other questions that came in, but I want to be respectful of your time, and I, I will um, answer those questions, and we'll get them um, out there uh, to everybody. And with that, I will turn it back over uh, to my friend and colleague, Jody. Journey, it's all yours. Thank you, Jason. That was a, a great presentation. Um, as we wrap up today, I wanted to let you know that uh, how you can learn more about Galileo, the best way is to schedule a personalized walkthrough for you and other members in your school or district. Uh, this way you can learn firsthand how to use Galileo and see it in action. Uh, you can reach us directly by calling us at 1-877-442-5453, or you can send us a quick email with your request and uh, demo dates and times. Um, as also, you can follow us on Facebook. It's a great place to find updates, tips, learn what we're doing. Um, just uh, go to our Facebook page and like us, and um, you'll receive those uh, announcements in your news feed. As I mentioned previously, this event was recorded today and will be available on our website. Check out um, check out our webinars covering a variety of useful Galileo topics. Uh, such as Galileo's Comprehensive Assessment System or Digital Curriculum Platform. All webinars can be viewed at your con uh, convenience, and uh, just go to our website on our resources page. But right now, this concludes our presentation.